This is the fifth video in our series looking at how to set up and configure a Synology NAS running Distation Manager 7. Now that we've installed hard drives and connected our NAS to our home network, we are ready to power it up, so let's plug our NAS into the mains and press the power button. When we switch on our NAS for the first time, our NAS will run through a series of checks which will take a couple of minutes to complete. First, the status light on our NAS will start to flash green. Then once it has confirmed the number of hard drives that have been installed, the corresponding indicator light for each drive bay will become illuminated. If you find that an indicator light for one of the drives that you fitted does not light up, then switch off your NAS and double check that the hard drive has been correctly seated into its drive bay. If the drive still does not work, double check that the hard drive is compatible with your model of NAS. As we have fitted two hard drives to our NAS, the indicator lights for drive 1 and 2 have become illuminated. The integrity of our hard drives is now checked, and the NAS determines if the drives have had any system software installed on them. If you purchased your NAS with pre-installed hard drives, the NAS will now beep and the status lights will become green. However, as we purchased a driveless NAS and then fitted new blank hard drives, our NAS will beep, but the status light will continue to flash, indicating that we're now ready to install Distation Manager onto our NAS. As our NAS is referred to as headless, in order to see what our NAS is doing, we will need to use a secondary device. While Synology have created apps that will allow us to connect to our NAS through Windows, macOS, iOS and Android, for the rest of this series, we will be using a web browser to configure our NAS. As our NAS is connected to our home network, which in turn has access to the internet, if we open a web browser on our computer and in the address bar type find.synology.com, when we press enter on our keyboard, something called Synology Web Assistant will load. Web Assistant is an online application created by Synology that has been specifically designed to help us find and connect to any Synology device on our home network. So once Web Assistant has detected our NAS, we are able to see basic information regarding that device. First, we have server name, which is the name that our NAS will use when we browse for it on our home network. We then have the IP address that our NAS is currently using. You can think of an IP address a little like a telephone number, in that it will allow other devices on our network to find and communicate with our NAS. Next, we have something called MAC address. A MAC address is simply a unique name that is being designated to a networked device to help route data across our network. However, we can also use a MAC address to either audit or block a device on our network. We then have the serial number for our NAS, along with the version of Distation Manager that can be installed. Model number simply identifies the model of Synology NAS that Web Assistant has found. Finally, we have the current status of our NAS, which at the moment states not installed. Let's select Connect. We are now presented with the Synology End User License Agreement, which we have to agree to in order to continue. We are then shown Synology's privacy statement. After selecting continue, we're taken to the welcome screen and shown an image of the NAS that we're going to work on along with its model number. Let's select install. In order to use our NAS, we will need to install something called Distation Manager, which is a Linux based operating system that runs on all models of Synology NAS. While the latest version of Distation Manager is version 7, if we wish, we can choose to manually install a previous version of DSM. However, as we actually want to run Distation Manager 7, we will choose the option Automatically download the latest version from Synology website. When we select Next, we're asked to confirm that we're OK with deleting any data that may be stored on the drives that have been fitted to our NAS. As our drives are both brand new, we will simply confirm that we understand that all data will be deleted and then click continue. 
Our NAS will now initialize, format and partition our hard drives. It will then download a copy of Distation Manager and install it onto our NAS. While this whole process took roughly 7 minutes to complete, this estimate is dependent on the speed of your broadband connection and the model of NAS you are using. For anyone that has purchased their NAS pre-configured with a hard drive, we have now caught up to the same point as you will be in after switching on your NAS for the first time. If from the Welcome to DS7 panel we choose Start, we are prompted to give our NAS a device name and set up an administrator's account. As the device name will help us to identify our NAS when we browse for it on our network, we should give our NAS a distinctive name, so we've decided to use its model number. The reason we've done this is that within the model number we have the year that this model of NAS was released, so over time we will have a consistent reminder as to the age of our hardware and when its support will run out. Next we need to create an administrator's account. While we will be looking at creating accounts on our NAS in a future video, in order to be able to set up and configure our NAS we will need to use an account with elevated access permissions. As these elevated access permissions will allow an account to be able to change settings and install or uninstall applications or services, we want to limit the number of administrative accounts that we create. So historically, network administrators would create a single account with elevated access permissions and call it something like administrator or admin. However, it would appear that for security reasons, Synology will no longer allow us to use those names for our administrator's account. So we're going to need to use a different name, but one which is easily identified as our administrator's account. Next, we need to choose a password for the account we're about to create. Once again, for security reasons, we need to create a password that is difficult to hack. So we recommend that your password should be at least 10 characters in length, use both upper and lowercase letters, contain at least one number and one non-character letter. Now might be a good time to note down both your administrator's username and password. While you can reset the administrator's password if needed, it's worth making a note now as it will help you to avoid frustration later. As you can see, we're going to take the option to allow our NAS to be discoverable by Web Assistant. While we can turn this option off once we have our NAS fully configured, for now it's better to leave Web Assistant connected so that we can easily find our NAS on our network. If when you select Next you are asked if you would like your computer to remember your password, you should always choose either Never for this website or Not now. We're now given three options with regards to how we want to update our NAS. While Synology recommend the option automatically install important DSM and package updates only, we prefer to use the option notify me when DSM and package updates are available and I will install them manually. The reason for this is that DSM and package updates can sometimes break or remove functionality from our NAS. So by choosing to manually install updates, not only can we better troubleshoot issues that might arise, we have more control over what and when something happens to our NAS. Let's select Next. Unless you intend to use a specific Synology service, at the moment there is little value in creating a Synology account. So because you can create a Synology account at any time should you need to, for now we recommend that you skip this option. Next, Synology asks if they can collect device information. However, while they state that they will exclude personally identifiable data, as we have no idea what data they are actually collecting, we feel it's better to not agree to their request by simply selecting Submit. As our NAS has now finished installing its system software, we are taken to the Distation Manager desktop. So to summarize, in this video, we took a look at the process for downloading and installing Distation Manager onto a Synology NAS. We then ran through the basic options and setting choices that need to be completed in order to get to the DSM desktop. 
However, as the internal storage in our NAS has not yet been initialized, in the next video in this series, we're going to run through the creation of storage pools and volumes on our NAS.